on today's video, we have an update from the Chinese version of Rise of Kingdoms, and in it, three bullet points are gonna change the game forever. The daily chests now allow you to pick which commander you want, and wheel commanders are now gonna be part of those chests, what? Let's talk about that and much more in this video. The goods and bads, because there are also bad things about this. So sit back, smash a like on the video, and let's go. Hey there, YouTube. Welcome back to Gecko Gaming. Oh my goodness, as Bodian hit me up with a massive, massive, massive piece of information. Shout out to him. He has an awesome Discord with a lot of Rise of Kingdom stuff in it. It's linked in the description down below if you want to go say thanks to him for being awesome and sharing this information with us. Now, I know y'all are probably hopping around happy how many sculptures now we can get. There are some negatives in this and we're going to play Devil's Advocate in this video as well as Celebrate. But before we start though, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below and hit the bell to get a notification. We got another video still coming out today with part two of Lost Kingdom 523 still in the oven. Now, let's talk about this event though, or this update better said. There are short, there's a short version of translation and a bigger version of translation, which you can read if you'd like. We're gonna go with a shorter version, which is as follows. Point number one, the daily chest commanders are now pickable. You're no longer gated to the commander that you are working on right now. That kind of sucks for for um, Ronnie. He just made a video about him getting a bunch of sculptures. I think it was Richard sculptures. Oh well. Point number two, wheel commanders will now enter the daily chest selection after the appearance of the three wheels. And for that, we're gonna go down a little bit to this point and read it further because it says, the list will gradually increase with optional commanders based on the history of the kingdom. Lucky wheel event commanders will enter the daily special self-selection list within a period of time after the three rounds. So it's not exactly as soon as the wheels end, it goes there. It's gonna take a little bit of time. So you gotta keep that in mind. And actually, and actually enter the self-selection list. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Finally, daily chest selection depends on the kingdom's age and not on your account, which means you can go into, you can, in your younger kingdom, buy the daily chests for, let's say, four months. And then you can migrate to a very old kingdom. You can get, select 10 sculptures of each of the very, very, very old, of the older commanders, unlock a bunch of them from this, and then get Rider of Histories out the wazoo and potentially even expertise one of the very, very, very old, very young commanders, which are not even available in, in younger kingdoms yet, and then go back and smash people. Yeah, there's a lot we need to talk about. And for me personally, this is a big hooray. Why? <laughs> I don't have Khan. I want Khan. Now I can get Khan from this. I don't have uh, Takeda. I want Takeda. I can get him from this too. Alex is already done. And then from there, any wheel commander I want to get now, I could. That's available in 401. And I have a few older ones that I have not done, like Khan, like Takeda, so forth and so on. Um, yeah, this is nuts. This is actually nuts. And I do honestly think that it's going to be a, a very welcomed change by the community. And I mean, this has been in the making for a little while now. It's not that like two weeks ago, they said, okay, well, let's make a change in the game and just do this real quick. These kinds of developments take time. This is probably about two months in the making, give or take. And Lilith decided to drop it on us in the beginning of the year as a as a, as the a good first update. And now let's play a little bit of devil's advocate because I I do see the positives in here, and I do think we have a very 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 good change in here for a good portion of us. But if we look at long term of Rise of Kingdoms. This is another move by Lilith to devalue items in the game. Previously, commanders were harder to get. Previously, equipment was harder to get. Now, equipment became much easier to get, which means it devalued the equipment. Yes, more people have access to it, which is good, but it still devalued the equipment. There is no way to, uh, to whether the equipment was too expensive before or too cheap now, that's not the point. It's, it devalued something within the game. Now, devaluing something is very easy, but making it more expensive is much harder. It's just like we say, when you nerf a commander, very bad, but when you buff a commander, very good, right? And so 
At this point, what this means is that they are devaluing commanders. Now, Lilith have been on a path of trying to make it more accessible to newer players and to make it so that newer players uh, have an easier time combating against older players. And the main reason for that is that folks are not liking the heroic anthems and strife of eight where you need to spend five six hundred bucks plus to just be competitive in terms of technology crystal technology and if you want to expert max it out that's a few thousand bucks every single kvk for something that goes away at the end of it and so folks have been migrating to younger kingdoms doing kvk twos more often doing light versus darkness more often and as a result native players of those kingdoms are quitting the game why because there is no reason on earth for anyone to have to go through a Teletakeda rallies in KVK season three when, or even, well, it would be three, when realistically they could be available there, but not at the masses that they are. Yes, in season three, there were people who had a Teletakeda's expertise, but for that, you'd have to spend a boatload of sculptures and essentially give up on, do one mightiest governor and then give up on potential future wheels of Takeda. And so it was expensive to get an Atel Takeda out there. Nowadays, season threes are all Atel Takedas and all Theodorids and all Zenobias. Like everybody's coming in from with commanders that are 600 plus days old and going into younger kingdoms and wrecking the native civilizations, well, the native governors, and, and they quit. So this, this is, not, it is, is a hooray for us because we get to, to get more commanders. But getting more commanders means not only we get more commanders, but everyone else gets more commanders. And now, where's the stick? Because this is the carrot. This is absolutely the carrot. Hey, you can get more commanders now. Where's the stick? The stick could have been the crystal researches in KVK. What's the point of having all the commanders expertise when you don't have the ability to buy, to get the crystal researches leveled up enough so that your commanders make any sense? At the end of the day, if you have T5s, my T4s with my tech, which wasn't maxed out, I had like 888 eight, eight attacks and 777s seven, seven, defense, and that cost me about 500 bucks. My T4s destroyed T5s. I don't know what their research has looked like, but they're definitely not good considering two expertise T5 commanders, Guan Alex, T5 commanders going up against... William Sal Saladin Williams, I have more marches, I have more troops because I have better tech, I have better attack, I have anything like that. Positive traits for me. And so more commanders doesn't necessarily mean that this is good. I love this. I want Khan, I want Takeda. I start, I'm gonna start buying the daily sp bundles right now, every single day from here on out to have them available and ready to rock and roll when the change comes in. But is it good? Devaluing items in your game means that you are now in retention mode and not in growth mode. When you can allow yourself to do something like crystal researches, which make it so that KVKs are now impossible to play without spending money on crystals. If you can allow yourself to do that, it means that your game is growing enough so that you can start, we can say milk the cow, right? But when you start feeding the cow more than milking it, then you're in, a, in the process of trying to keep it alive rather than milk it or have it exist. And so I love this change, don't get me wrong. I already am gonna go buy the daily bundles on both of my accounts <laughs> every single day from now on. And I'm not gonna buy the six bucks. I think I'm gonna just buy the $3 bundle and that's that. Um, even though I would say that six bucks is not the worst price you can pay, give or take, but again, if you land on one commander out of six bucks, that's, that's a lot of money for one sculpture. Although again, if you end up with 10 sculptures for six bucks, that's amazing, right? I like the $3 bundle, the daily bundle that is $3. It comes with a gold key, it comes with 500 AP, and it comes with eight hour speed ups, which, you, which are very, very useful for you. Even as an older player, you have gold commanders, that gold key commanders that you haven't expertised yet. You have Mulan now that is very hard to get. So I'm buying the $3 every single day from here on out, but I don't know how much of a big fan I am of this change. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. Again, hey, I'll get Khan finally. Hooray, I'll get Takeda finally. I mean, nice, uh, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, I mean, hell, I'll take Takeda over Khan right now to start getting our Atel Takeda rally set up and ready to rock and roll. But I don't know. I don't know. I have mixed feelings about all this. I want to know what you all think. Leave me a comment down below and let me know. 
I'm Gecko. I'm out of here. Appreciate every single one of you. Drop the like on this video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you probably again today very soon. Take care and have a good one. Peace.